Let me get a sense of what a focal length does for a lens. We defined focal length back when we talked about mirrors. It's the location where rays of parallel light are brought to, to focus and it actually has the very much the same interpretation here for a lens. If we were to shoot parallel rays of light into a lens, what we would see is that they converge at some point. This is kind of like when you take sunlight under a magnifying lens and try to focus it down to a point and burn a leaf or something like that. Those rays of light from the sun are almost parallel because the sun is infinitely far away. So the object distance is infinitely far away is sort of being equi equivalent to parallel rays of light coming in. If you had a very far, uh, far away source of light and you set P roughly positive infinity, it's always positive number, remember, then when we look at our equation here, 1 over P will go to 0 because P is so large. And we're left with an equation that says 1 over i is equal to 1 over f. For this particular kind of lens, let's say a convex lens, f is a positive number. When I solve for i, I get i equals f. And if f is a positive number because we have a convex lens, we have that i is a positive number. And we will use the same kind of interpretation as we did before, that if the, I, the image distance i is positive, then that means that this is a real image. So we should take away that uh, for a converging lens, f is always a positive number. It will bring parallel rays to an actual point of focus, and it does so on the real side. It's a real image. Real image is being defined as one where light rays actually come together. You could burn something with that image, or you could take a, a leaf and put it at the focal point and actually burn the leaf. There's a somewhat different situation that arises for a concave lens. We again have this idea of a focal length for the concave lens, but in this case what you would find, it, if we go back and look at our um, expression for how we calculate a focal length, the, f the concave lens has a negative focal length, and I'll explain that in a little moment, a bit, but if you were given a lens whose focal length was negative, what does that mean for the image from, uh, or with this point of focus for parallel light rays incident? Imagine a bunch of light rays coming in straight and parallel here, then what's happening is that the image distance is a, is a negative number because when I put in an infinitely far away object, so 1 over p is 1 over infinity, in other words this is 0, and 1 over i equals 1 over f, well when I set i equals to f, because I rearrange terms here, and I know that f is less than 0, the interpretation that i is a negative number always tells me that it's an imaginary image uh, or a virtual image. And uh, by that we mean that the image is on the negative side of the lens. And if I draw a picture, what does that really look like? It means that the light rays are bending out uh, like they are here, and they never actually converge on this side of the lens. In other words, I could never take this kind of lens and burn a leaf with it. But if I were looking back into the lens, I was an observer, let's say, over here, this is my eye, and I'm looking back that way, I would not understand that the light rays are diverging because the light be was bent by the lens. What I would think is light rays are diverging, and I would extrapolate them back, just like I did with those dotted lines, and I would imagine that the light was all coming from a common origin. In other words, I would see an image back there at a distance i, which is a negative number, back behind the lens. So it's called a point of virtual focus. The light rays never actually can focus over there, but I imagine that they focus. And, uh, and that's why we call it a virtual image. I want to get some experience now uh, looking at lenses and understanding when are focal lengths positive and negative I want us to remember this expression, 1 over f is equal to n minus 1, 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. And get some practice uh, computing this, at least mentally, with a lens like the one I've drawn here. So if I were to ask you on a, a test, is this a lens that's converging or a diverging lens? or 
can you not tell? Um, well, we, we, we actually could tell. Um, in other words, I could look at this formula and say, well, uh, the first surface here is essentially flat. In other words, if it had a radius of curvature, it's really, really large. So R1 is infinite. So I'm going to say 1 over R1 is 0. And then R2 is the, is the radius of curvature associated with the second surface that the light goes through. And it looks like um, I would need to have a center of curvature over on the V side of the lens because that's what would be necessary to sweep out that surface. So if the center of curvature of side number 2 is over here, that means R2 is a negative number. But notice in my focal length expression, I have 0 minus a negative number. And that means that uh, I have a negative 1 over R2. And since R2 is a negative number, this focal length becomes positive. This is actually an example of a converging lens. I want to consider the opposite case. Let's take the same lens and flip it around. And ask, is this a converging lens? So I'm doing nothing different other than just having the light come into a lens that I flipped around 180 degrees. Well, in this case, R2 is infinite, and R1 is greater than 0 because the center of curvature is right there. And in my expression for the focal length, I would take this thing and set it to 0 because I'm taking 1 over an infinite number. This is positive right here. And n minus 1 is positive because n is the index refraction of the glass. And 1 is less than that. So this will be greater than 0. And as a result, this is still a converging lens. In fact, it has the same numerical value as the focal length when the lens was oriented the other way. So if someone never installed your eyeglasses in backwards, you wouldn't care because it's still a converging lens uh, either way. Let's take another example and ask, is this a converging lens? Here I have a, a surface that's rather bulbous. It's curved out quite a lot. And then I meant to draw another one that's only bulged out or bulged in a little bit. I have R1 is, is the radius of curvature associated with that lens. It's a gr number greater than 0. And so is R2, a number greater than 0, because its center of curvature is over here. So that's a little confusing. But at least by eye, it looks like R2 is bigger than R1. In fact, if this was heading toward a flat surface back here on the back side, R2 would be infinitely large. So I meant to draw something where R2 is greater than R1. and so. When I look in my expression, 1 over f is n, min n minus 1, 1 over on r1 minus 1 over r2. If r2 is a bigger number, then 1 over r2 is a smaller number than 1 over r1. And as a result, this expression in this parenthesis right here is positive, and 1 over f is positive. So this is also an example of a converging lens. It's not ambiguous, and it's not a diverging lens. It's a converging lens. It's very often the case that I will give you or you will be given the focal length of a lens that will have been previously determined, but we should have the wherewithal to calculate the focal length if necessary.